Teachers were telling your parents about who you are as a student. Those are your essential transferable skills. The issue is that no one has told you yet that that's how you get paid. I always tell people that it's really important, regardless of what industry you're in, to identify your transferable skills. But these transferable skills that you have, which I like to call your superpowers, those things cannot actually be taught. And I think it's interesting that the more that I talk to adults and I get higher in my career, how many times people cannot identify their transferable skills, when in fact, those are the skills that actually make you more money, make you rise into your career and make you 100% more confident. Because when you can recognize them in a room, you also recognize that other people don't have the superpower that you have. Your transferable skills are the skills that the teachers always praised you for. And I want you to think about those times. I think it's even helpful if you call your parents and say, what did the teachers say about me? Tim is always so gracious. He's just always gracious. He always shares with people. They come out as personality traits. Lexi is always vocal. And as an adult, my transferable skill has been the one, especially in the type of work that I do, where I'm the one who's not afraid to go to leadership and say, we have a problem. When I was a child, I was always the one at the birthday party that was helping organize stuff, even if it wasn't my party. I knew where the present table was. I was a six-year-old who thought that I was an adult and I love to organize things. I love to be a part of what we might call the event process. Fun fact, when I started my career, I was a program manager, which is essentially the same thing. And so I think that we all have to kind of take a step back and say, what were those personality traits that we had when we were younger that everyone praised us for, but yet no one has told us that's how you make money with it. So if you are a gracious person, if you're very good at giving people, everybody a piece of the pie, everybody gets the same slice of pizza, then I guarantee you one of your transferable skills is that you're an equitable leader. And especially right now in the world that we're in, that's actually a huge thing to say on a resume. And it's even a bigger thing Thing to give an example of because people want to work for you. But those things that we did as children is actually what we need to thrive. In terms of transferable skills, what does like uber positivity mean? That's actually a great skill because usually as adults, right, we're always in situations in our personal and our professional life where something is really, really, really hard. If you were a child that was super duper positive and always enthusiastic and always like, it's going to be great, right? Then you are that leader. You are the motivator. You are the team member who's a motivator, whether you're the individual contributor or whether you are the leader of the company. You're the one who says that regardless of what happens, this is not the hill that we're going to die on and continuing that positive narrative and that positive attitude, that's the kind of stuff that actually gets people to do their job well. What are the top three skills that can be useful for any role? The top three that I look for, resourcefulness. I like to see people who come in and literally are like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to figure it out. Leaders are looking at that because to me, what that means as a leader is I'm like, oh, okay, so if I give you something to do, a hard thing to do, you may not know how to do it, but that's not an excuse to not get it done. The second one is teachable. Feedback is very important. I love working with people who are always asking for feedback and learning how to sift through that feedback to decide here are the gifts that I want, here are the gifts that I did not necessarily care for. You need to be able to get feedback and take it in well and ask questions and then implement it. That shows your leadership that you want to learn. And it's interesting to me how many times your feedback can be your greatest superpower and your greatest kryptonite. But you have to learn how to cater feedback to get what you want. And the last thing is flexibility. And you have to be ready for that and be available for that. And so that really ties into that resourcefulness. How have you personally learned the skill of receiving and giving feedback? I think the, the feedback that I receive the most is by people that I respect. When you give me feedback, it's really about the solution. How in which you give me feedback, it needs to come on a plate. And what that means is that we're here to learn and grow and for us to be better. We're not here to tear me down or me to tear you down. And I think that's very important. So it really does go both ways. It's important for adults to set boundaries at work. I know even at the office to make it clear, this is how I receive feedback the best way. And it's also important for the person giving the feedback to hear that and learn that and implement that when they give the person 
feedback. But people are using a feedback portal as a way to be petty and disrespectful, and that is not okay. And personally, I do not tolerate it in my work function. How well or not have you observed companies focusing on how to give and receive feedback? Are we still crawling there? It has so much impact yet may still be done poorly. Part of being able to give feedback well is being a good leader. The biggest thing about being a good leader is being a good humanizer because all leadership is, is humanizing the narrative. So we live in this duality of saying, leave emotions at the door, do not be a human. But I promise you, the 1% of billionaires in the world are quite emotional about their money. Everyone is emotional about paying bills. Everyone is emotional about taking care of their family. Everyone is emotional about making sure their kids have clothes and food. So we need to bring emotion back into the workplace or at least call upon it because I promise you it's currently there wherever you work, just nobody wants to say it out loud. So frankly, I understand why leadership is lacking. Colonialism is real and colonization is real wherever you are in the world. It makes sense why we treat people the way we treat them in capitalist work societies. The question is what are we doing to change that narrative to bring humanness in it? How can I just sit here as your leader and make sure that you thrive, that you're paid equitably, that you are seen and that you are validated in this experience? Because that's my only job. What you don't tolerate in your function. I think Lexi, you're talking about just petty feedback or cruelty or bullying via feedback. How do you not tolerate it? I always walk into a situation and be like, this is who I am and this is who I'm not. I'm so excited to work with you. Your turn. It's interesting how people say they don't want to be treated like X, but they can never say, but I do want to be treated like Y. And we live in a world where everyone has been taught to say everything they hate, but no one can say what they love. This is how I expect to be treated. And then also opening up the conversation with, and I really want to know how you expect to be treated so I can do that. And so when I say I do not tolerate certain things, I make it very clear from a team perspective, this is what will not happen. When someone comes to me and says, I think this happened to me and I don't feel good, I do not try to make them feel like it didn't happen. I wanna have an active listening conversation with them about why they think that happened. And it is my job to figure out how we can get this work done, but how to uplift them and motivate them to be their best selves. And that's how I start with, I will not, I will not tolerate pettiness, um, yeah. the people that I work with. And when I see it, I call it out. There's so many opportunities percolating right now to gain those skills. How would you recommend someone work on these problem solving skills as it relates to all the isms that we're confronted with these days? If there is a safe space there or there's a neutral space, I encourage you to learn this, to, to start you know, behaving in this skill, to learn the skill of tell people how you feel. And it's a skill that we just don't have. We don't, as human nature, feel comfortable going to someone and saying, you hurt my feelings. Basically defend yourself, have accountability for yourself. Putting boundaries in place and letting people know how you expect to be treated is a literal life skill. Be the leader on your team that you would want. And part of being that change is being able to say what to, to, to say how you expect to be treated and then offering safe spaces for people to tell you the same thing. Be the person that you want to lead you. If we can remember one thing when we finish this conversation. Doing the work to understand the type of life that you want and the type of lifestyle that you want. Find the job that connects to that. But it's interesting to watch most people run their lives as if they're motivated by money when they're not. And then they get upset that their life is not what they want. You should be doing the work at all times to take intake on what you want out of life. You have the right to make your career choices. You do not have to stay at places that don't make you feel whole and don't make you feel, feel human. But also in reality, we live in a capitalist society. So I, so I never tell people, quit your job. Your manager cussed you out, leave. No, what do you want? What kind of house do you want? Where do you wanna live? And how much is that stuff? Okay, cool. Create the life that you want. Stop creating the lives that the magazines and all these very, very rich capitalist conglomerates have told you that you want.